my channel. My name is Jess from Stellar Tarot. If you are new here, then welcome. I'm so glad to have you here at my little witchy and tarot corner of the internet. Uh, if you are a long-term subscriber or a member, then thank you so, so much for being here. I want to say thank you to my newest member, Teal, for uh, becoming a member and supporting my channel. And if you would like to support my channel and get some extra perks like monthly readings, story time with Stellar sessions, behind the scenes, and sometimes even like bonus discount codes or secret members only sales for readings and products from my shop, then be sure to just scroll a little bit down there and click that join button. Once I get to a point where I have enough members of my channel, I am going to start having monthly live videos for members only. But right now, I think I'm hovering around like the 10 members mark, <laughs> not a lot. Um, and so it just doesn't seem worth it for, for 10 people. It'd be very hard to set up a time where people could actually attend live and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and watching playbacks for live videos for such a, a small number of members seems a little pointless. So just so you know, the more people that I get, uh, I am going to, to add more perks as we go along. So this is something that is very much in development. And as things speed up, then, um, you know, other things will become available. Uh, also, I just want to remind you guys, you can follow me on other places. I'm most active, I would say, on Instagram. Um, Facebook, definitely I do do some things there. Um, you can also uh, follow me on SoundCloud. I don't tend to upload a ton of uh, video, f or not video, um, like uh, audio files there, but they are there at times um, when I feel the need to put something out there, but without necessarily sitting down to film and, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, you can also join my mailing list. Uh, you can follow me on Pinterest, not horribly active there, but I do have some boards going and I do reference some things from time to time. And of course, if you would like to get a personal reading, you can do so by clicking the link to my shop down below. It's at my website, stellartarot.ca, and you can purchase your very own personalized readings. Most readings are available in a emailed PDF format, unlisted YouTube video format, or a live Skype session. So uh, do be sure to take a look at that and, um, you know, give that a... Uh, a try as well. And um, yeah, you can join the mailing list if you would like to give back to me monetarily without, um, you know, subscribing to my channel on a regular basis. You can also leave a PayPal or a Ko-Fi donation as well, or leave a tip in my tip jar uh, through my shop. So thank you very much everyone for being here with me today. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video which is my little Urban Crow Oracle unboxing. So this is from, uh, I've, I've literally, I cut the bag open, that's it. This is, this is a true unboxing or unbagging as it were. Um, these are my first impressions. I am gonna have some video cutaways, but I'm not gonna be showing the entire deck on the screen. This is from the creator MJ Sorry, I'm going to butcher your name, Colin, Colinane, Kukulian. I'm sorry. 
I'm horribly, horribly sorry. I'm not the best when it comes to uh, pronunciations. This is a 54 card deck and a booklet. Um, this is sort of the companion to the Crow Tarot, which I have and I love. Uh, for reference, that deck gets used all the time by me. I missed the uh, backing of it when it was in indie fo uh, form, but I did purchase it. Lit I pre-ordered it when it was available from US Games. As soon as I saw it was available for pre-order purchase, I clicked pre-order on it and I got it um, the day it came out as mass market. So I, at least I think I did. I can't remember. Oh, there's so many decks that I've like pre-order backed and then I think that I bought them like a few months out. My timeline is fucked, <laughs> okay? Sorry. Um, uh, anyways, uh, I do have this one. This is the indie deck version. Um, right away, nice two-part hardback box. It is not decorated on the inside, which is fine. I do appreciate it when the deck has, like when the creator takes a little bit more care to make the inside really beautiful as well. Um, but we also don't mind when the, when the box is undecorated. Um, right away, I'm noticing no booklet. So I'm guessing that that was a separate purchase and that is fine. Um, I do not require a booklet. Um, most Oracle decks I find I'm just able to jump into and work with right away. But um, I will double check before posting this video and making it live to double check that the booklet was in fact a separate purchase and that's why I didn't get it. Um, and if there was an issue where I was supposed to get a booklet and I didn't, then I will contact MJ herself and uh, let her know that um, it didn't come. So beautiful, beautiful backings. Um, there is a little bit of like a city scape in the background, but really the focus is on the crow and the tree, the, the mist, all of that stuff. And I like the little subtle use of her um, initials on the backs of the cards as well. Um, those do not appear to be prevalent in the actual cards themselves. It's possible that the, the little signatures might be in some of these cards and just simply been cropped out once it goes to purchase. Um, but yes, or, or production, not purchase. This is um, the deck. So in almost all of the cards I can see so far, at least there is a cityscape, um, at least in the background. This card is release. Um, I'm noticing that the color palette is very similar to the uh, Crow Tarot, and when I do the cutaways, I am going to put um, a few cards uh, side by side with the Crow Tarot. Um, I really am liking some of these. Oh, the card survival is beautiful. It has a fox in it, and you guys probably already know that I really adore foxes. Um, some of the titles are things like Soar and Self-Interest and Scavenge, which I think are really beautiful um, interpretations of what um, a lot of like crows and ravens sort of do. But there's also things like Sacred Space and Routine, which I think are really beautifully um, incorporating uh, maybe lesser known things that, that crows and ravens tend to do uh, as a species and um, incorporates them into um, a human, an, an animistic sort of vibe, which I'm really loving. Um, there is another card here, Protection, which I just think is divinely beautiful. That one I'm going to make sure I give you a really good cutaway on. Um, and Preparation is really interesting too. It appears to be taking place perhaps on like a construction site or something like that. And um, that gives me some very interesting takes on this card. 
Um, play is really fun. It has a very inner child-like vibe there. They are literally playing in the puddles and in the rain, in the water, which I think is fantastic. Um, oh, the card night is just stunning. Oh, even the card nature has cityscape in it, which I think is really beautiful because it really drives home for us modern witches and pagans that uh, you absolutely can have uh, access to nature even when you live in the middle of a city. I know there's people like uh, Jessie Huntenberg particularly, if you watch her, like if you follow her Instagram, there's all these really wonderful shots of like her going into places like her local cemetery and graveyards and connecting with nature there because while it is a developed space and a built up space, it's also a place where a lot of people don't tend to go on a regular basis. So wildlife can really enjoy being there because it does tend to be sort of abandoned by, or at least not frequented by other humans. And um, they can really like, the birds can really nest there. They can really hunt for their food, like the insects and seeds and, and natural stuff there. And I just think that that's a really beautiful um, way of depicting it. Um, Mimicry is a really fun card. It actually even has text on there, come here scout. Um, something that a lot of people may not know is that uh, crows and ravens and other members of the Corvoid family actually have a huge talent for mimicking different sounds and cries of other birds. And I have personally witnessed stellar jays, which are a member of the Corvoid family. This is many years ago now at um, a little uh, duplex, a uh, split level duplex that um, we rented when um, before I ever had Emily. So this is before we even bought our townhouse. And um, I was I had put out uh, peanuts in the backyard for the Jays. And we were right in a corner. So our house backed out onto the side of another person's yard. And they had like some big cedar hedges that had really grown up, like the, the height of their a two-story house and um, I noticed a couple stellar jays sitting up on top of the the roof and in the the cedars there and then all of a sudden a neighbor's cat came walking along the back of my fence and one of the stellar jays actually like was was trying was about to go fly down to go get the peanuts and it saw the cat and so it mimicked the cry of a bald eagle that really high-pitched uh, that they do when they're like circling over something and, and hunting. And the cat froze, looked around, didn't see the eagle, but the Stellar J mimicked the cry again. The cat actually then turned around, jumped down off of the fence and went and hid underneath the stairs that led up to that back neighbor's porch um, underneath some like a uh, like, like some paving stones or something that like a pile of them and yeah the cat actually ran away and hid because it's afraid of the predator the eagle and once the cat had hid the jays then went and got their peanuts and you know flew around and hid them and um yeah it was a very cool mo um memory is interesting i thought for sure that it would have um like it's it's very much about like being able to remember people and I know in Vancouver which is a city about an hour away from me um the the there is actually like every year when you listen to like radio that's broadcast out of there they talk about some of the issues that people have with like the crows that are in Vancouver city itself and how um like it's been shown that the crows actually remember faces and stuff so if you do something abusive to one of the crows they'll actually remember your face and people have had issues with being attacked by the crows after they've done things uh, to them uh, luck is kind of cute all these little fish falling from the sky <laughs> um, and isolation is a really beautiful card this one definitely I think is very emotive and you really get um, 
the gist of what that card is actually trying to say to you. Illusion gives me real, like, um, Mirror of Erised vibes uh, from Harry Potter. Displacement is, issue, is, is interesting, too, with this um, car and all the trash. And I'm not sure what's dropped all over the car, whether it be, like, bird feces or what? Snow? It's hard to say. Some of these cards, I think, are um, very, uh, like a couple of them are very similar. Uh, the initial one that I showed, um, what was it called? Um, I think it was called, S oh, what was it? What were you? <laughs> what were you? Oh, can't find it now, of course. No, I can't find it. But this, um, this grief card is really beautiful. It does look similar to another card that's in here, which I'll find in a minute. Um, some of them are very, like, easy to kind of get the idea of and understand. Others are a lot more subtle. Um... Yeah, like some of them are a lot more subtle. And I think that you really have an opportunity to sort of like look at the different ideas that are um, here and um, to really reflect on them. Like anticipation is one that I think is very interesting. Like there's all these empty chairs. So what is this crow anticipating? Um, what is it hoping it will sort of, you know, discover and, and find, like, uh, release. That was the, the grief one that I thought looked very similar with the crow under the ground. Um, yeah, it's very, very interesting, I think, some of the, the different cards that are depicted here. Uh, Wrath is amazing. I love that. Um, and, uh, yeah, the um, the other one that, that has it's ended on that I think is just absolutely beautiful is the Anomaly card. And this is, of course, a white crow or a white raven, um, an albino, basically. And I have actually seen one in person at a local, um, like, little... It's kind of like a little developed park. I'm not sure if the little pond that you walk around there is a natural pond or if it um, is man-made, but regardless, it's a beautiful little pond. Um, it's a haven for a lot of different uh, bird species. Swans come there every year in the warmer months. Uh, great blue herons can be seen there year-round. There's always um, at least one turtle kind of sunning itself on a log and things like that. Um, and it's almost entirely surrounded by uh, people's houses. So you get to look into like some of these really beautifully done gardens and backyards of the people that um, uh, have uh, live in the, the area around it. Most of the, the houses are a little bit more on the, you know, the, the upper price side, of course, because they are, um, uh, they are um, around, you know, a, a premium property backing onto waterfront, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a beaver there that uh, a lot of the neighbors um, have come to really loathe because uh, they just want to chop every single tree down. So a lot of the trees now have the um, the wire around the bottom. But totally off topic, but I've seen um, an albino crow there and she's beautiful. She's absolutely stunning and I love to see her. Um, and apparently uh, white crows and ravens actually have a shorter... Um, lifespan for the most part because um, crows recognize each other uh, in part by size but also in part by the, the color of their feathers and, and things like that and because the white raven is so different color wise um, sometimes in uh, crow and raven communities they will actually be um, 
ostracized and uh, shunned by, from the community because of their extreme difference in color. And, sometimes, and because crows are so dependent upon community to survive, it actually can be uh, difficult for them to live as long as um, their black counterparts. So I think that is very interesting indeed. All in all, I am very impressed with this deck. And um, yeah, I really can't wait to, to incorporate this into my practice more. If you enjoyed today's video, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I would love to have you subscribe to my channel as well. It would be wonderful to have you here on a regular basis. I do upload twice a week for the most part on Mondays, or sorry, on Sundays and Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And of course, I do offer my members content interspersed in there as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really do love to have your support in whatever way you choose to show it. Leave a comment down below if you liked this deck as well and if it's something that you have purchased or if it's something that you would uh, like to add to your own collection. And until I see you guys next time, please remember to take care of yourselves, stay safe, and of course, as always, be wise, be brave, and be magical. Bye!